This is the final video on how to fix the compression release on a 1998 Polaris 500 Sportsman. Um, what we're going to do with this video is show you how to alter the um, little hairpin spring to make it work correctly and show you how to install it and um, what it does exactly. <clears throat> So first of all, you will, when you open up the, um, you take the cover off of the side of your cam, it's on the left side by your knee on the Polaris 500, there's three screws, take them out and you'll see this cam, uh, the end of the cam. So it's best to position it exactly like I have shown here with this little 3 16 dowel pin here in the three sixteenths dowel pin or it's, I guess it's a quarter inch dowel pin in the uh, nine o'clock position. The reason you do that is because that puts this here little actuating ball pointing at the ground and uh, that allows you to take this here um, shaft in and out without any worry about interference from the ball. And by the way, the ball is completely safe. It's never going to fall out. It's trapped in there for life. Um, that's nothing to worry about. But uh, it's, it's best to, it's easier to park it like this here. That way you can get this shaft in and out without any interference. And uh, what I suggest before you take this apart or you start doing anything is to mark this um, dowel pin here in orange paint. Mark this here cam in orange paint. Take a look at this cam. It's weird shaped and it's hard to get, easy to get it confused as where is what and everything. It's really a stupid design. And uh, here is where the uh, cam must go against and touch this, touch this dowel pin. And here's the hair pin, part of the hair pin spring. And under here is the other end of the hairpin spring, which I have marked in white paint. And the face that it goes against, I have marked in white paint. It's best to do this. Spray this whole thing off with carburetor cleaner and mark it. That way, it'll save you a lot of confusion as to where stuff goes and what's happening. It's really a horrible design. It can go together a couple of ways wrong very easily. So now, on with it. Okay. Um, also, while I'm talking about this here, when this thing is finished and it's perfectly functioning and your engine is off, when your engine is off or if it's being rotated by your pull cord or your starter motor, only the starter motor, this, this little cam here must always be forced up against this dowel pin. If, it, if it's floating in the air here like this here, it's no good and it's not going to uh, actuate and make sure that that ball is uh, trapped in the out position. That's very important. This thing, when the motor is rest, should always, always be up against that that dowel pin exactly like this. Now take a good look at that cam because it's really confusing. Uh, easy to think it's there and it's not. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart and show you how I um, altered the spring. And by the way, <coughs> I'll tell you that in a minute. All you have to do to get this apart, if, if you don't know, is just pull it out. Now watch the spring don't go flying in the air. It's going nowhere right now because it's still trapped on the shelf. But I'm going to pull this out and set the spring down here on the counter. Now, you will notice that uh, I have altered this spring. If um, you will look at my little um, diagram here, the way the spring comes from the factory, it kind of looks like this here. Here's this arm that's facing you with the white arm. It's uh, over here, 
and the orange arm is over here. Well, that does not give it enough tension to actuate, to, to rotate this shaft. So <coughs> what you have to do is unwind this spring. Now, I'm going to have to set the camera down a moment, and um, I'm working by myself, and I'll put the spring on here and um, show you how I did this here. Now, I have this white, the white arm goes on first. That's why I marked this in white. That white arm goes on there facing the, uh, the cam, and you'll notice that that white arm is on the white there on the, um, on the, uh, cam. All right, so that's on there correctly. Now I'm going to take this, I have to put this down a moment. <clears throat> and what you do is You hold this in your hand like this here, and with the other hand, I'm, I'm not able to do it now, you unwind this spring. Remember, you're unwinding it. You're not winding it tighter. You're unwinding it. You see where the, the white is, you see where the arm, orange is, and you want to unwind it so that it, when you do it, so that it looks like this here, and it's best to have it on the shaft like this when you're unwinding it, because that'll keep the uh, uh, coils fairly in line. If you try to do this out in the air by yourself, these coils get out of out of line. Now I will show you again how this goes back. Show you again how this goes back together, and one uh, I have to put the camera down again. Okay, the, the spring is on there, the white arm of the spring is on the white on my cam, and the uh, orange arm is over there, and I'm able to easily slide this into the uh, um, cam because the ball is facing down. Now, I'll come over here. I'm trying to hold that spring. I'll catch that orange thing right on that pin. Oh, it came loose. Try it again. Catch that orange right on that pin and slide it in. And there you see the orange arm is there. The white arm is there. And uh, the cam is always up against there. That cam must always be up against that pin when the engine is not running. If it's if that cam's flopping over here someplace when the engine's not running, it's not going to lock that ball in the out position. And, and what happens is that ball is in the out position right now it's sticking out of the cam base circle a little bit and when it comes by it actually opens up your exhaust valve a little bit and that gives you compression release that's what you're looking for so this is the final video and uh, if you look in the Polaris manual they have a very cheesy description of what the spring preload should be. However, they don't tell you that you're supposed to fix it yourself. I mean, uh, you buy brand new springs and they're not going to work. You can Google this here on uh, uh, YouTube and on the internet. Guys use three or four springs and they don't work. 
and don't worry about making too much force on that spring because don't forget when when winter time comes this thing is soaked in oil and this thing don't move so easy so it's got to overcome that oil uh, stiction so this is the final video and yes it did work perfect we fought this thing for the longest time on this 98 uh, Polaris 500 Sportsman and I would also like to say in closing I think it's pretty cheesy of these manufacturers nowadays to have to have a compression release to start your engine that's that's out of the uh, early 1900s that they did this when people were hand cranking cars there's no need for that we've got modern day electronics we've got good batteries there's no reason you need a compression release to start a little bitty 500 cc engine so any rate that's my opinion so um, you have to work with what you've got and i don't know what these engineers were thinking if they even were thinking but i hope this helps i don't like to be negative all the time but it's just crazy the way people uh, build things. So, good luck.